Making a story within a fighting game is always a tricky balance to find. How do you create a fun and more importantly playable experience within a game whose mechanics are limited to side-by-side -side fencing and in this case, realistic sword fighting? Or is it that hard after all? <laughs> Hellish Quart came out in February of 2021. It is the most realistic sword fighting and fencing game on the market, which attracted an admittedly limited yet loyal audience. This two-man Polish development team managed to refine everything a sword fighting game like this looks for. Yet since its release back in 2021, it's gone through major updates and more importantly, now we've had a story mode introduced. So, Hellish Quart is now finally here, but is it any good? The stories are coming out bit by bit, following a few lines of each side character. There are tons of characters here, so we only get a bit of content per, but I thought I'd dive into it now we've got our first bit of content. The first side story here is of Jacek Dindinski, starting off in the Polish city of Szemilsz... Szemilsz... Shemushil. We start off in the Polish city of Shemushil, an important city during the time of the game, which is 1622 if you can't tell by the big writing. Because of its location, it was really great as a trading route connecting a lot of Central Europe. Being the second oldest city after Krakow in Poland, of course, it's a fantastic setting to start the game, giving us a look at some of the lesser known history of the Polish regions. Our protagonist, Jacek, puts his saber down in return for picking up a stick ready to spar with another character that we've met before, Tarnowski. This older lad is actually playable in the arcade modes at the moment, but currently doesn't have a story of his own yet. As mentioned, I think most of the characters, if not all of them, will all have different side quests that you can play with, but each individual character can show up through other people's side quests. It's basically the MCU of sword fighting games, what can I say? Okay, we don't know how deep that's going to go, but there will be another character that turns up later on in this story as we delve into it. We get our first story-based introduction to the combat system within the game, and, well, this is the most important part. So the combat in this is something that is, well, a beauty to behold. First of all, you do a lot of blocking automatically. If you're in the right position, you will block. If you get too close, however, they'll be able to get through that block. So you need to make sure that distance is correct. Also, do you see that sassy head movement? Okay, can you stand up straight? I'm trying to do a tutorial here, Father. If you double tap backwards, you can dodge backwards and the same forward. Put your dick away. And that's pretty much how your movement and blocking comes. Now, it will recommend you use a controller since it's just, well, way easier to do anything. You can use X to do side swipe, B to do from the other side. The one you'll be using the most though, is why it tends to work most of the time and yes you can get double kills and of course if we want to go for the legs we can do a downward swipe with a now that's pretty much everything you need to know there's some things like grabbing and grappling but if i'm going to be honest you're trying to grab and grapple at the start you're going to be making a bit of a hash of it so let me just try and beat this woman okay please don't take that out of context i meant cut her no i meant chop her into pieces no i meant <clears throat> okay let me let, let me just Embarrassing! After I beat this man a few times with a stick. <laughs> takes me inside and we talk about what our mission is. He has an uncle that is dying and he has a lot of land and wealth. He wants to make sure he gains all the wealth from that will. A will that could be changed by his cousins and relatives. They are sending people there so it is our job as Yasik to go and defend him. Make sure that nobody is forcing his hand so all the wealth goes to, well, a guy whose hairline is further back than this game is set and probably won't get much chance to spend this money because he maybe has about three years. Okay, we can't account for cholera too much in this time. Moving on to the first bit of open world section, this is something that I haven't seen in the game before. Everything up to this point and all the demos and every update has just been based on the combat, but we actually get some free movement to ride around on our horse to explore the story. And it's, um... Well, you can tell the game was not made for it. Going all over the place, bashing into things, it's a little bit of a disaster, but it gets us through to the next section. Start! 
Znaczy rozkaz nie przepuszczać! Odłóż to, bo jeszcze sobie krzywdę jaką zrobisz. Od kogo ten rozkaz? Od pani Maryny Ludzickiej! To jej ziemię! Jedź inną drogą! Urzesz, bo to ziemia Tarnawskich. Jadę do pana Mikołaja. Chodź już nad grobem! Pani Ludzicka tutaj teraz rządzi! Rozkaz był nie wpuszczać! To teraz masz nowy rozkaz. Przepuszczam! Honestly, if this game's gonna do anything, it's gonna help me learn Polish. Okay, at least Polish insults. Our first duel in the open world is against this man. His friend was stupid enough to pull out a gun on us, and, you know, that went absolutely fine for him. So, our first fight commences. Hacking and slashing, I get to use some of the skills that I've learned in the tutorial that came before. Moving back and forth. I mean, it's a really cool setting, fighting in the water. Most of the time you're going to be doing one hit kills, but sometimes you can cut people. They'll then be a bit slower if you cut their knee, or they won't be able to reach as far if they cut their hand, and there's some cool additions like that. However, in this case, this guy gets two lives, we get one. But he wasn't too much of a fuss to take out anyway. A więc nie tylko ja tu pilnuję tego całego umierającego stryja. Okay, is this some sort of Polish inside joke that I'm missing? The first lesson as a master swordsman is never get distracted from your mission. Okay, unless there's coconuts that need chopping. This is my own private domicile and I will not be harassed. Bitch! Heading into the house we've been told to go to, the maid says that our uncle, okay, he's not our uncle, the uncle that we're supposed to be guarding is locked away in his room. The monk that's in there says that only other monks can pass through. Okay, well, we could batter down the door, but being a good person, I've got to go and find another monk who's on my side to get him through the door to eventually get to our uncle. It's not our uncle. Oh, would you look at that? We found one. <laughs> This is going to be the final battle of the little tutorial, and it does go on for quite some time. We have to get through three opponents, the last having way too many lives, and actually took me quite a bit of time to get through. Let's talk a little bit about the difficulty. Hellish Court is actually a much harder game than you might think. It is seemingly so basic with its movements back and forth, automatic blocking and normal attacks using just the buttons on your controller, but actually timing and the AI, depending on the fighter they're using, can be quite fast. Our first battle was very, very easy, but that was because it was just a side character. These lads are main characters. This guy with the stupid ponytail, he comes up and will have his own story as far as I know eventually in the future. It very quickly becomes noticeable that this game does have some really good levels of difficulty. Learning with timing is one of your main things. If you time a strike wrong, they're going to get straight through. Automatic blocking won't cut it. If you're in the wrong position, automatic blocking won't cut it. If you get too close, they will uh, try and chop your head off in the most embarrassing ways possible. I adore the combat system. It can feel quite frustrating sometimes, and there are plenty of moments where I thought I was surefire going to win a duel and out of nowhere they'd get a cheeky thrust through or a slash that just hit me at the wrong location. 
because it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to kill you just getting a slash through. It could just be a shoulder and an arm scratch. But if your position's slightly wrong or they've timed it perfectly, they can hit you in the neck or the head or even so hard in the thigh that you bleed out in the floor screaming. Okay, let's actually finish this guy now. Czekaj do matki! Zobacz! Diabelski synu. Brawo, rycerzu! Nawet najmarniejsze stworzenie ma prawo żyć. Zwłaszcza, że nie my mu życie daliśmy. I tell the priest what the problem is and I need him to come back with me. Once we get in, well, we get through the door. And Mr. Drunk Priest inside is not very happy about it. Do you remember when I said the last one was the last fight? I mean, I counted it as the last fight. I guess technically this is your last fight. <laughs> okay, we're fighting a drunk priest. Is it embarrassing to say he beat me the first time? I, I'm just not going to show that. I'm not going to show it. I'm not going to show it. Okay, I'll show it. After one of the most intense battles of my career as a soldier, we beat the priest getting into the room and finally completing our quest of looking after Mr. Dying Man so nobody can steal his money. And we take some of his money. All in all, I absolutely love this first iteration into the story. It is very small and there is only about 30 minutes of playtime, but within that 30 minutes you get such a good idea at what these guys are going for with Hellish Quart. The graphics look great, the sword fighting is phenomenal, and even though it can be infuriating, that's just down to, well, actually me being quite bad at the game. The voice acting is fantastic, and whilst everything's in Polish, you still get such a good idea of the characters and their own individual ways of approaching situations. I mean, there are some really funny moments within this as well. Of course, the story mode is not the only bit of unique content within this. You've got arcade modes fighting against bots, computers, going through different stages with fighting multiple enemies back to back. You can pick any of the vast array of characters, all with different weapons and skill sets. And my god, it is so good for testing out these hunting grounds. The combat strength of each of the characters and the way that they work with how you prefer to fight, whether you're aggressive or defensive. Also. I mean, it is a cheap as hell game. It is still an indie title made by two people. And look, this is not sponsored, but £7.85 for a game of this quality. Granted, it doesn't have all the content in the world and they're bringing out all these story sections very slowly. But this is one of the best games that very few people have played. I know everybody puts it in the title, but surely it is justified. Surely this is the best sword fighting game that nobody plays because 17th century Poland, okay, it's not the most mainstream of eras for games. But having single player modes, stories, arcades, and even local two player co-op and some variants of multiplayer that are granted do need improving but will be coming soon, I don't think you can really get much better steel than this. This has been Hellish Quart. I'd love to know if you guys have played it and what your favorite parts are. But they have just released the story update and I cannot wait to see what other characters we get to meet because it is, as we'd say in the great British country, a bit of a hoot.